Well, in our series of Where Are They Now? I must admit, probably one of the more controversial figures on the Isle of Man, Trevor Baines is with us. And uh, I'm going to start, Mr. Baines, by, by reading out your Wikipedia. I mean, you have a Wikipedia. You may, yeah. Okay. Um, you are a British convicted criminal, formerly a businessman, who claimed to have amassed an estimated fortune of over £130 million through banking, financial trading and investment in the Miss World competition. This claim was later described by a Manx judge as based on a lie. Now, that's a start for ten. If, if, I've never seen one to, to have a, that in your Wikipedia. Yeah. And, and, and I suppose people do want to know what has been happening to Trevor Baines over the last few years. I mean, very high-profile yes. cases. Um, should, we, should we go back to that? Should we, should we deal with yes. that first? Yes, yes. I mean, your, your world came tumbling down, didn't it? Um, uh, yes, it, it was a blow. And I think, but the, I think the biggest blow was, uh, in that whole case, was the fact that the the crook, the actual crook, came to the Isle of Man, and um, uh, and gave evidence of didn't say anything really, and they, he collected forty one million dollars and went back to the United States, and that was that. So I did, that was the part that made me feel bad. Okay, but you were in the sometimes rich list. Yes. Did you really? Yes, have by a, by their choice. I was going to say because a lot of rich people I understand don't want to get in that list. Did you not actually? And a lot of put, a lot of put in, I, and I was put in years ago, and uh, I just didn't complain. So is one hundred and thirty uh, million on the money? Well, my f my father was very wealthy, yeah. um, but uh, I, I never had one hundred and thirty million. No, no, I was very well off though. Yeah, yeah. and as I say, everything changed pretty pretty quickly. For mm. you. Do, do you think you were a, a, a scapegoat to some degree? Because I don't think there's been many other cases that have gone through. Uh, Manx courts, anyway, on the, on this sort of yes, were, were they focused on you? Do you think that you were yes, be made an example of or something? The, there was a, yes, definitely, and uh, uh, trying to show the other man's financial system in in a super light. Um, Deemster Carouche, who uh, opened the, the whole performance, he knew exactly what had happened that we were conned, and uh, unfortunately, he died. So um, uh, we lost a great supporter. In fact, uh, in that very first court case, Deemster Carouche said that how lucky um, the, the government was to have me in a position where I could guide and protect the, this gentleman's trust. So losing him was a blow. Can you explain what the court case really was about? Yes, there was a hundred and something million. I think it was 170 million. Uh, this man, purportedly had made in share dealings and um, he'd conned I think it was 15 banks and uh, PKF the uh, accountancy firm and they all believed him I believed him because they did really mm -hmm. um, and it turned out that it was uh, uh, built on air the entire company and that there'd never been any substantial thing to sell and you didn't so, know anything about that? no nothing absolutely nothing we we were befuddled. My co-trustee, who turned in turned out to be uh, in on the uh, the client's game, uh, was a, a Swiss banker, licensed banker, again imparting trust to the proceedings. Uh, yeah. I, yes. you, I mean, you made your money dealing with these sort of people, didn't you? I mean, he was very good. <laughs> he really was very good. Uh, all the names of his companies were famous names turned out to be uh, illegally formed but um, the, the pres his presentation was terrific I mean you know but did you call, did you call these people did they could find you I mean you, you, you yes he nice. was just another client we we had clients from 1898 when the company was founded and uh, uh, I think we probably had three bad clients along the way um, but this one just slipped on, slipped through the net. I didn't know. I really didn't know. Okay. Well, there's that court case, and then of course there's all this business about you funding the court case, which, uh, uh, well, yeah, I think you got done for that as well, didn't you? You did. The, the, the money was taken. How do you deal with that accusation that you stole money to, from a from yeah. somewhere else to pay for your court proceedings? I, I don't want to say too much about that, but I understand uh, something. Anything is litigation, obviously. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Um, but let me put it this way. Uh, the 
the authorities claimed that I had stolen the entire contents of a friend's trust, which was untrue. Right. That, I don't but want to say more than that. Uh, not for that. Right. But, okay, let's go to the point that you yeah. went to prison. Yeah. So you were found guilty. Of oh, the, of, of, of the, yes, the, the right. big, big Do you issue. Do now? Uh, yes, in the sense that I shouldn't have been conned. But I didn't do anything. Uh, we didn't actually make any money. I think uh, uh, we increased that, the value of that trust from 175 to 240 million by, you know, judiciously investing, and uh, 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 and that was all returned, every penny of it. And I think they accused me of falsely receiving $29,000 over the three years or four years or something. It was nonsense. Should we be feeling sorry for you? I mean... No, no. I, I, uh, looking back on it, it's part of life's, you know. Well, I mean, your world went upside down. I mean, there, there you are. You, yeah. I mean, I, and I vaguely moved your circle. Your 50th birthday I got invited to. This <laughs> Lido. And yes, you gave out right. a medal. And you were living this jet set life. You, yes. Your, your wife and, and... Well, we were doing very well. They produce pop record when we used to play yeah. things ready. And, I mean, that's it. I mean, so people see this, that the mighty have fallen. Do you think, yeah. you know, you were, t well, you, you have already said about the targeting thing, but yeah, you've gone from that lifestyle to going to Derby. Yes. That must have uh, been a shock. But all these things, you know, I, I had had a very exciting life. And I remember when, uh, when I bought Miss World, uh, Eric Morley, who was running it, dreadful man, he, uh, he said, Trevor, I've, I'm ringing you because we bought a hotel in, in the Bahamas or some Bermuda, Bermuda, and you should go out and see it. So I went out and it turned out to be a one-time hotel that had fallen into the lake. And uh, it was all madness, you know. Hmm. I, just, I just laughed it off. And what was it like, though, moving to the, the prison and, and, and the way... Jerby. Yeah. Yes, Jerby is uh, uh, it's an interesting place. It's, uh, it, I think it costs 75 million pounds or something to build and houses 80 people on average over, I think, five wings, so probably 20 people to a wing. It, it's, it's extraordinary, the size of it. It's just, it, Liverpool would do well with it. Uh, were you picked on? Were you, were, did you find it easy? No, no. No, I had, I had a wonderful people were absolutely fabulous. Staff were terrific, and the uh, and the other residents were, were great fun. <laughs> but you put you put yourself on set quite a bit, didn't you? I heard that from you know people who also were up there when you were there. You, you got you know you, you didn't. You, there were obviously some pressures there from people, weren't there? So I, you wanted to get away from people. I didn't notice. I signed up for every seat. I signed. I was the chief librarian from the first week. And then I signed up for languages and art and anything that was on offer, I was there. So from half past eight, nine o'clock in the morning, I was never in my cell. I was wandering about doing things, you know. Yeah. And the gym, of course. I, I'm, I'm just fascinated about this sort of change, though, you know, from the jet set to this sort of thing. I mean, you could never imagine it in your wildest dreams what was going to happen like no. that. No, no. It, it, it was way beyond shock. I, I really couldn't believe it. When... Um, I remember the actual day we we dealt with the whole thing, and the money had been sent uh, back to whoever was supposed to receive it. Certainly, it wasn't me. And uh, uh, I got a call uh, from a, a lawyer saying they found a letter from the police in Switzerland saying that they were starting criminal proceedings against you. I guess why it's been dealt with. Yeah. You know, it was, no loss of funds. In, uh, actually, the funds were increased dramatically. Um, so I didn't, you know, I just didn't didn't understand it. How has it changed you? Uh, what do you mean, older and wiser? Well, I mean, <laughs> you. I mean, you may not see, but I'm, I'm there at your house when everything was being sold off. I mean, yes. you know, you'd lost everything. Yeah. I mean, there were drawers with bills in them, and I think that had a lot number on them. Yes. It, it, you literally were, I mean, literally take to the cleaners in that sense. It, it, it was quite disgusting the way it was carried out and, and unnecessary. It, it, yes, but I don't want to, uh, that is time gone, you know. 
how how do you sort of do now? I mean, you're still here on the Isle of Man, but you yes. live sometimes uh, elsewhere, do you? Or? I live in France too, yes. Um, courtesy of a great friend, German friend. And uh, between the two, and have a very happy life. But a completely different sort of life. Completely different, yeah. How, do you, how does Trevor Baines fill in his day these days? I mean, you don't mind me saying how old you are, because you, you don't uh, do well. 77. Yeah. Mm. So you retired. Yes. Yes. But how do you fill your days in? I write. Ah. I do. I write a lot. I write, apart from a daily blog, I've, I've written my autobiography, um, which will be on sale soon. <laughs> and uh, Sorry about that. Sorry. And a children's book and a, a few other bits and pieces, you know. So uh, that, that's most of my days writing. And it's a bit rude to ask this maybe, but yeah. you know, money-wise, you're okay? Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. And, and did you lose a lot of friends in all this? Um, it's amazing. Friends who you didn't, I, I didn't think were particular friends turned out to be terrific friends. And some who I thought were very good friends turned out to be not such good friends. But by and large, my circle didn't really change very much. Still got a huge number of friends in Switzerland and uh, uh, were, you know, yeah. uh, tobogganing. So once, when once you were banged up, you still got visitors and people, you weren't shunned oh, in that sense. letters and, yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Is, is, any advice for people who are trying to make their way in the world. I mean, you know, not to sail too close to the wind. Is that one of the, the you know, I, yes. I don't put words in your mouth, but you know. I, to be honest, I, I wouldn't, if I could have the whole thing again, um, I wouldn't be a CSP in the Isle of Man. It's uh, everything you do. Uh, Alan Goff, a, a well known local advocate, he wouldn't mind me saying, once said that every pound in the Isle of Man is on the run from somewhere. Well, that was then, right? Do you think it's much more regulated now, actually? There's a reason for investing in the Isle of Man or the Cayman Islands or Jersey or Guernsey. The, there's a reason, and it's usually either VAT or tax. So you are always sailing close to the wind. Do you admit you were sailing close to the wind yourself then, by saying all, that? All CSPs do. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's part of the... Someone comes to you and says, I don't want to pay tax. You know? mm -hmm. So... Any future things in, besides your autobiography, but have you got mm. other plans you want to do or are you just happy to uh, sit uh, in a well-known pub in town, which I've seen you a few times, those <laughs> yes, sorts of things. Yes, enjoy, your, enjoy your retirement. The Fidgen. Um, yes, I do. Uh, and I'm actually very busy. I can't really tell you. I do photography and writing and so on. Um, all the things that I would love to have done but never had time to do, I'm now doing. So it's completely different. Some people might say, you know, we shouldn't be interviewing you. You're a convicted criminal, as it says there. Yeah, yeah. How do you view yourself now, though? I don't, I don't feel I'm certainly convicted. I don't, I've never thought I was a criminal. I thought I was really well and truly conned by a master criminal who um, I, he's, I see him on the Internet and he's uh, um, giving lots of money to charity and playing polo in, uh, in New York State. Um, and that's the only thing that offends me. And you can't get... Because he should be in prison. And you, you can't get any justice in that sense back? I mean, no. That's it? No, it's gone. So it must be quite hard then, you say, watching his lifestyle. Yes. And that yes. should be your lifestyle, the, in your head, I guess. This is why I train myself not to look backwards. Except for the fun things. <laughs>